you have successfully managed to claw your way into the Casa Berenice Recordings Podcast, Episode 23. This podcast is our way to release multi-tracked recordings from house concerts that we host in our living room. We being Clay Chaplin and Heather Lockey, and including our Claude friends Xenotron, Fuzzy, Nemesis, and Fluff Nugget. This episode features a performance by Placeholder. It was recorded live at a Casa Berenice house concert on December 9th, 2022. Stick around after the performance for an interview with Placeholder. And now, here is Placeholder performing on percussion, prepared piano, and electronics.
Hi, I'm Daniel Newman Lessler. Hi, I'm Eric Larnson. I'm Margot Harms. And they are placeholder. I think Eric should start this because he built a patch for it. Uh, okay, so I built a PD patch. It does the Alvin Lucier thing. Uh, if you never heard of the piece, it's called I Am Sitting in a Room. You should check it out. I had something similar in the PD patch where uh, just was recording the improvisation as it happens and then over a certain amount of time, uh, in this case it was six minutes, it would repeat itself, and that happened like four or five times. Nice. So how did you organize what we heard? Was there a structure? There was some structure in it, just because of how Eric planned out the max patch. It repeated every six minutes, and it went five times. 
So that kind of informed it because you could hear it coming back to the beginning and it was like a at least in my thought process it was a indicator okay it's time to ch change up the sound i'm making because i've been in this world for six minutes now and i'm ready to do something else and you can hear that i guess like you know his sounds enough well because he was sampling what uh everything that happened in the room so like sometimes it was eric sound specifically but sometimes it's like oh i remember daniel did that a few minutes ago so it must be repeating or oh that's a sound that I was doing two goes ago I haven't touched that instrument in 10 minutes at least so okay it's repeating again time to move on and from where I was sitting uh, a lot of the times I would take my cues not necessarily from the, uh, the the recorded music but was taking things from other more sort of active musical cues such as uh, Eric's music box uh, or uh, the various instruments that Margot's playing and would try to create a sort of mm, more spontaneous form on top of the thing that was sort of uh, hard wired into the piece uh, and then would sort of trigger those sections um, with things that were mm, pretty clear in terms of like indicators of you know arriving or departing from previous musical material. Uh, so sometimes that would be through the bass drum mallet on the low strings, sometimes it would be revisiting previous material um, so to create a sense of continuity. So I actually sort of purposefully departed from Eric's uh, Lucier patch. I think um, one of the things that sort of makes placeholder placeholder is that we really try to change the setup every single show. Um, where we are not really ever using the same instrumentation, that it's always different combinations, or we use the same setup to drastically different ends. And I think there's this great excitement that comes from us sort of learning how to play our instruments in real time. Um, there's a certain adrenaline aspect to it, and there's a certain survival aspect to it um, where it really could all blow up but we all trust one another enough as musicians, as friends, that um, we're, we're able to sort of create something that is able to come out of very little experience of whatever that, that mm -hmm. setup is. Mm -hmm. Or maybe I'm just speaking for myself. No, I agree entirely. I mean, like, uh, I, I developed a lot of anxiety uh, about, like, being very perfect in undergrad, which I think a lot of people can relate to. Mm -hmm. And... Um, placeholders kind of become a safe haven because I just keep bringing things that I don't even know how to turn them on half the time to the group and it's it's really really just straight up tinkering and problem solving in the spot and I'm really really attracted to the idea of doing things uh, without understanding how they work because I think it leads to more open and interesting results than people who maybe we're trained that it has to be a very specific way to be right. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's a big part of what makes us work so well is that we just are so fluid. I also think the other thing that sort of makes placeholder placeholder is that we're sort of friends first and then mm -hmm. collaborator second. And I think sort of the uh, just sort of sheer joy of getting to just hang out uh, mm -hmm. sort of becomes infectious. Um, and it's not that we're like performing friendship, um, as cheesy as that sounds. Um, like this is not a Captain Planet type situation no. <laughs> <laughs> where Eric's got heart and Margot's got, uh, I don't know what Margot's got. <laughs> no, nothing good. <laughs> I have nothing to offer. <laughs> um, but, uh, I, I don't know. I, it, it, in so many performance situations, the the product is sort of the central focus, and here it's really like, let's hang, and sometimes we'll do music, and sometimes when we're supposed to have a rehearsal, we'll end up like watching shitty movies, um, and that ends up being like sort of just as productive for us That's as so nice. anything else. <laughs> Twilight has That's made a nice. massive impact on our band. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, listeners. Um, what exactly each of you were playing? So knowing that we were going to be working with something that was going to continue to accrue more and more layers, I knew 
and knowing that I was going to take the opportunity to play on your beautiful new piano, because um, that's not something that we often get to do in the venues that we play at. There isn't necessarily a piano. Mm -hmm. um, and so actually, I sort of similar to Margot, I sort of went back to my roots, um, mm -hmm. which when we were starting out, I was mostly doing piano work. Uh, so it was also sort of a homecoming for me. Knowing that we were going to accrue lots of layers, I knew that I wanted quite a large variety of sound. So hence, I was uh, using a couple different types of bowing techniques at the piano, um, some on low bass strings, some mid-range, using some of these really delightful uh, nano hex bugs, which are these vibrating kids' toys that generate these very delightful buzzing sounds. Um, on the strings and the tuning pins, and then doing a couple uh, or some preparations of some of the strings with some blue tack to give it that sort of Cajun percussive like quality where you're uh, sometimes getting two notes that should sound distinct from one another in terms of pitch, and you're actually sort of detuning one of them such that they sound like just off versions of one another, um, or you're highlighting certain partials. And so, yeah, trying to create as disparate of a uh, sound sources from the piano as I could. And then uh, lastly, bringing in a relatively new toy of mine, which is working with feedback on a megaphone uh, and playing with that to create sort of these like electronic bird call like sounds. Mm -hmm. We already talked about the PD patch, but it had that running, doing the Lucier thing. Oh, well, this is important too. So I had this snare drum, um, and I wasn't using it as a snare drum, but just more as this reverberant body. Um, and I had a just a set of transducers uh, just attached to the drum, sort of taped on, and that was how I was getting the sounds to come out. So not only is it being recorded on this crappy laptop speaker, it's also being played back out with these transducers on a snare drum. So it's already like super unclean as far as like recording standards go but that's also where all the interesting quality comes from mm -hmm. let's see i had some music boxes that were just sitting on the drum um which they were on there for so long that you don't realize how much they're dampening the drum and then as soon as i take them off you're like oh there's like so much more reverberant oh and then there was also a synthesizer that i was using and it was literally just uh, reaper's default sine tone synth <laughs> Yeah, Reaper. Uh, and I just like to use really simple synths like that just because, uh, I don't know, like people, it seems like they want to have like the most complex thing ever. And then I'm just like, what does this crappy synth sound like when I jank up the MIDI and make it do the squeaky sign tone and then choose the one a half step below it? And it's like super warped and it sounds like it's J.I., but it's actually just a bad synth and <laughs> me sending MIDI values <laughs> yeah, that don't make great. any sense. Yep. And everyone's like, oh, how'd you make that sound? And I'm like, it's just bad. <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, so that's J.I. or bad synth? Yes. <laughs> so that's what that I was working with. That should be a question. <laughs> and Margo, you had just what you were bowing. You had the Ebo and yeah. all sorts of things. I, I also had a snare drum that I used as an amplifier, but... Um, I had a bunch of cut up guitar strings gaff taped to the beating side of my drum, which I, um, oh, I'm totally blanking on the word right it, now. It I excited, I excited them yes. with an Evo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then my, I keep my drum tuned really low. I honestly just beat the shit out of my drum and I, I tend to be pretty violent in my personal practice. Mm -hmm. So my my drum is in awful condition but it's great for this because I, um the head is so loose that i was able to get like six or seven pitches out of bending it just from a little bit of pressure on my hands which was awesome and then uh i had a couple of noah bells that made a few appearances i have these really super wicked little metal kitchen bowls that are only an inch big and I love mm. more than anything so I was bowing those on the drum I have uh, probably like my placeholder signature for the time being uh, these big grandfather clock chime rods so they're the they're the they're the long metal rods that like I always prop up on top um, but those are what's inside of a grandfather clock so they're really easy to get online. <laughs> oh, wow. And, uh, and yeah, I bet. You can pull a ton of overtones out of them, which is really cool. How did you discover that? 
Oh, well, <laughs> <laughs> I went to PASIC in 2019. What's PASIC? Oh, the Percussive Arts Society International Convention. And I had to volunteer so that I didn't have to pay because I could not afford to pay to go to the convention. So in between sessions I wanted to attend, I was selling t-shirts, uh, which was run by Rob Funkhauser. And he's a really cool percussionist in Indianapolis who loves building things. He just like passively mentioned that he had grandfather clock chime boxes that he made with the spiral ones instead of the rods. Uh, and he would just adhere them to like various wooden boxes and then put in a pickup and you were good to go. Mm-hmm. And I bought one because I had just started improvising and I was like, this sounds cool. And I don't have this at my school. Mm-hmm. I brought it home, showed my music theory teacher. The next day he emailed me to come to his office and he presented me with two giant clock rods and was no like, no these way. were my father's. Oh They've my been God. sitting in my garage for years. And I think that you might do some more with them That's than I have. Dude, so cool. that is yeah. really cool. It honestly felt like a big sign that it was time for a change and that was what prompted me to drop my music head degree and switch to performance. Wow. <laughs> so you can find more of our music and photos and other shenanigans at uh, Placeholder Trio at both Bandcamp and Instagram. <laughs> Please keep that in. Oh, that's stained. We're done. That's great. Thank you for joining us on the Casa Berenice Recordings podcast. We would like to thank the musicians for performing and our lovely community here in Northeast LA for attending our concerts. For more information about our house concerts or our current release catalog, please visit our website, CasaBerenice.recordings.com And thank you for listening. <laughs> <laughs>